Today I fucked up by losing my cat on the side of the highway somewhere in Kentucky. I recently closed my lease in Florida to move back into my dad's house, in Chicago. I'm working from home, don't need to be paying rent in FL if I can just live with family instead. So, I pack my shit up, store the rest in a storage unit, close my lease, and hit the road. My cat, Randall Flagg, accompanied me in the car as we drove through Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and then Kentucky. I was going about 105 miles per hour in a 70 miles per hour zone when the KY State Trooper pulled me over. I was making incredible time moving that quickly, but obviously the risk is being pulled over. Or death. Anyway, State Trooper comes to the passenger side of my car to stay away from highway speed traffic. My car was already off, so my window did not roll down when I tried that. Instead, he opened the door. During the discussion, we actually addressed the fact that my cat Randall could escape, and I asked if I could step out and keep the car sealed. That didn't end up happening. After the traffic stop, maybe about a minute of driving later, I realize Randall is not in the car anymore. Bolt of absolute panic. I pull over again. This time without a state trooper behind me. I frantically shout for him inside the car. Check the footboxes, seats, his little nooks, nothing. My mind racing, I leave the car on the side of the highway, and begin running back south to where I was pulled over. I reach the area, completely spent. Voices totally thrashed from shouting over the sound of the highway for Randall. The women who lives next to the highway, where I was pulled over, hasn't seen him. I have burrs all over my shoes and shorts from tromping through the Kentucky woods and fields next to the highway. I call the non-emergency number, my vet, my mom, dad. 45 minutes of shouting and walking along the highway. Serious emotional distress. My boy, my best bud is lost in these fucking woods somewhere. I see a state trooper nearby. He's very helpful and actually drives me back around to the area I lost Randall to keep looking, and gets the officer who pulled me over to come back also. No luck. I interact with more nice families in the area, leaving my number with them. Randall Flagg is hiding somewhere out there and he is too scared to come out. Or, God forbid, he was hit. Can't think about that right now. The officers help me relax take me back to my car back north up the highway. A detective with the troopers helps me look around the car again, just in case. No Randall. My car is now dead when I try to start it BC the hazards were on too long. Great. I have some jumper cables stuffed inside somewhere, but it's full of my shit as I'm moving, so I have to start pulling things out. The trooper with me didn't have cables, somehow. So I'm pulling bags out to access the area where the cables are. When I see motherfucking Randall Flagg's fuzzy black ass inside a half full garbage bag that had a lot of my clothes and towels in it. He's totally asleep, peaceful as a fat baby. I apologize to the officers profusely but they are completely professional about it, just glad that he's been found. They help me jump my car, and I get rolling again. Stayed much closer to the speed limit after that. Randall Flagg and I safely made it to Chicago the next day. He's extremely comfortable here at my dad's. Too long didn't read, I was pulled over and my cat escaped into the Kentucky woods next to a highway, but not really, he was just asleep in my car. I worked on my cardio and made friends in rural Kentucky while looking for him. Oh my god, I was so panicked for you. Total relief reading that he was there the whole time. Oh my so glad. It was such a huge relief to see him asleep, safe and sound. My cat actually did escape at a truck stop once. I ended up buying a raccoon trap, one of the humane, live capture ones, and stayed there overnight looking for him. I was able to find him the next morning, but I was frantic until then. I'm glad your fuzzball is safe and sound. That was a stressful read. So glad Randall Flagg is safe. I love that you named your cat Randall Flagg. Hope you made a pit stop at Hemingford home. Lol. Glad the walking dude is safe. The dark man is a surprisingly good boy. This is certainly the most villainous thing he'll ever do to me. I can't get over the fact that your cat has a last name. WTH? Exclamation mark. I'm really glad that Randall Flagg is doing well and probably isn't even aware of the trouble you went through. Crazy experiences make good stories. Pro tip, next time get a cage for him, 
or a leash. I have a modified leash with a seat belt clip. I just buckle him up so he wouldn't get out but at the same time it won't be restricting his freedom to move. Cheers. That's a good idea. He could still move around the cabin but I know he can't run off. Thanks. Today I fucked up by breaking successful breaking my friend out of jail. For a minute. This is a story of a jailbreak that actually worked. For a minute. This was years ago and I will not tell specifics and I will use fake names but this is the most epic F you I have ever heard of and it was me that F you. I was in the military but we were stateside. There was a group of fellow bodies with me. This was the night we all learned what a Jaeger bomb shot was. We had round after round after round after round. The night went by extremely fast and my friend Brian decided he would drive myself and my roommate home to our off base appointment. We left the bar and it was not long before we were pulled over. Turns out that a sedan having three 21 year olds leaving a bar at 2 a.m. near a military base is suspicious. The police officer knew we were all drunk when he got to Brian's car window and we all admitted to it. The police officer gave Brian a breathalyzer test which he promptly failed. The office handcuffed Brian and put him in the back of the police car. The officer then asked myself and the other passenger, who again was my roommate, if we would like to take a breath test and see if we were below the legal limit to drive Brian's car to our apartment so that it would not be towed and therefore would save Brian the impound charges. We took our breath tests and promptly failed. This is when things begin to get weird. The officer left us with Brian's car with the car keys also. The officer drove off with Brian to take him to the local jail for booking. To this day I don't know why he left us with Brian's keys. From the time the officer pulled us over it had been approximately 20 minutes. My roommate and I had an, oh so bright, idea. Public service announcement, this is a good time to mention that this took place several years ago. At a time when DUIs were only just beginning to become a serious offense and driving under the influence did not hold as serious a punishment as they do today. We were young and very stupid and I do not condone anyone driving under the influence of any mind-altering substance. In fact, I am extremely happy that none of us hurt anyone that night and that I can talk about this obnoxiousness today. I do not take lightly the danger we put ourselves and others in that night. This idea was followed by several ideas that escalated very quickly. You see. My roommate and I were military police officers. We felt bad that we let our friend drive us home and he got into trouble. With an extreme lack of judgment and against all of our common sense we decided that we would drive Brian's car back to our apartment. We didn't have far to drive but this doesn't excuse the absolute stupidity that we were acting upon. At some point between the time we started driving Brian's car and the time we arrived at our apartment, my roommate and I came up with a grand plan of how to get Brian out of jail. This was a multi-staged plan and I will break it down, 1. Get Brian's car back to our apartment, 2. Brush our teeth and put gum in, 3. Shave and get into our military police uniforms, 4. Attach our guard belts to our waist so that we look like we were on duty, 5. Call my precinct on base and inform the dispatch not to call the jail that Brian was at. Every night my command would call every jail in the area to check for military members so that we could take custody of them. I knew who was working dispatch that night and that person just so happened to owe me a big favor. I made it clear that I would not explain why I was asking dispatch not to call this specific jail. Dispatch agreed not to call. 6. I called the jail Brian was at and told them that I was my command and that I was checking to see if any military members were in their jail. They stated yes and stated Brian's name. I asked if it would be okay if we come and take Brian into custody. They said yes. 7. Which car? Leave Brian's car at our apartment and drive one of our own to the jail. 8. One last pep talk and walk out the door. We arrive at the jail and it's around 4am and very quiet, no other cars in the jail parking lot. We go to the jail entrance and ring a buzzer. A corrections officer speaks to us through an intercom system. I speak into the intercom while looking into a camera and I inform the corrections office that we are there to take custody of Brian. They said okay. It took about 25 minutes minutes before we heard anything further and as you could imagine we were scared out of our minds and it felt like an eternity. It felt like the exact fear you would feel if you were trying to break a friend out of jail. Then without warning a loud buzzer sound goes off. The large thick metal door in front of us slides open and on the other side we see two corrections officers. And, 
Brian in handcuffs. I've never personally seen a ghost but at that moment I knew what a person's face would look like if they ever had seen one. Brian's jaw dropped and his face went extremely flush, ghost white. I greeted the corrections officers and told them I will put my handcuffs on Brian so that they can have theirs back. Before doing so I turned Brian around and gave him a pat down. Swapped the handcuffs and... That was it, I had Brian in custody! Exclamation mark. My roommate and I thanked the corrections officers and we turn and walk away with our hearts beating out of our chest. We are walking across the parking lot to our vehicle when my roommate whispers to me, Don't get in the car, don't get in the car. At that moment a police officer walks up behind us and looks us dead in the eyes then asks us, aren't you two the passengers of the vehicle I just pull over tonight? It was this moment that our hearts stopped and so did our breathing. Like I said, the parking lot was empty when we had arrived. No one inside or outside of the jail had caught on to us. It just so happens that the arresting officer arrived to the jail while we were in the sally port waiting for Brian to be released to us. The arresting officer was just sitting there doing paper paperwork in his patrol car in the jail parking lot as we walked Brian out of the jail and to our car. I'm sure you can guess what happened next. Yup, we all got put in jail. About 8 am our command actually came and got us. We got back to base and they told me to go home and that they would call me when they needed me and to get my things in order because this was not going to go over well. I did just that and then arrived back at my command 24 hours later and I did not leave for 45 days and then we were deployed again so I never got off base again during that stateside stay. I was punished to the fullest extent of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. UCMJ, the military law. I was a disappointment to many people because of this FU. I felt ashamed and I took my punishment. All the while I was the most famous person at my command. I represented what it was to have your fellow military personnels back 100%. Everyone heard about this attempt to break Brian out of jail and we were practically celebrities. To this day I cannot figure how in the hell I had the stupidity to try and pull this off. I am proud to say that this did not ruin my military carrier and that I did get to serve out my enlisted and be discharged honorably. Needless to say I have never f you this bad ever again in my life. The military absolutely did not condone this behavior but in some sort of way we were looked at as the most loyal friends a person could have. Our entire command had camaraderie like never before. It was crazy, insane, and stupid. However, like many other stories from my youthful years in the military, it's funny to look back on and I am grateful to have had the opportunity to serve with my brother in arms. Even if we did f you sometimes. Like breaking someone out of jail for a minute. Too long didn't read, my buddy got a DUI, I was drinking with him and in the car when he got arrested, I was a military police officer. Two hours later I broke him out of jail by impersonating an on-duty MP, one of my many convictions. The officer that arrested my buddy recognized me in the jail parking lot after I had taken custody of my buddy. We both went to jail. I almost ruined my military career but now many years later I look back in awe of my stupidity and the time I tried to break a friend out of jail. Today I fucked up by accidentally using a breast pump, on the highest setting, for over an hour. The title pretty much says it all. Today, after eating a large Thanksgiving meal and partaking in two glasses of wine, I decided to pump and dumb. I retreated to an upstairs bedroom, set myself up, and started pumping. The fateful combination of baby-induced sleep deprivation, copious carbs, and wine left me feeling drowsy. As I sat in the rocking chair waiting for the pump to do its thing I felt myself nodding off. I figured I would dose for a few minutes while I finished pumping and then return to the COVID compliant family gathering in a timely manner. No such luck. I awoke over an hour later, clueless as to the length of my slumber, with nipples the size of wine corks emitting sad puffs of dust with each cycle of the pump. Hours later it still feels as though Satan himself tried to suck my soul out through my nipples. On the plus side, my otherwise latch struggling baby has had no problems nursing since my nipples grew three sizes today. Too long didn't read, fell asleep pumping breast milk, woke up with giant painful nipples. ETA, if you're breastfeeding or pumping and do decide to imbibe, please be aware that pumping and dumping does not lower the alcohol content in your milk. I pumped and dumped to relieve discomfort, 
but only time can remove alcohol from your breast milk. It metabolizes out, and generally takes 2-3 to three hours per beverage consumed.